When I was editing that recent video about my Obsidian setup, I ended up changing other things here and I noticed that I didn't explain some other details. So this is a follow-up on that video. First, here, there's this publish file lose here. I have no option. It has to stay here. This is the file, the CSS file, which contains all the instructions to build my website the way it is. So the colors, fonts, everything that, it, that you see there, the formatting, uh, the color scheme, everything comes from here. And Obsidian Publish needs to see, this file has to be here. The alternative would be go to file and links here and turn off where, okay, detect all file extensions. If I turn this off, it's gone. But it doesn't work for me because one of my goals with Obsidian is convert it into my cloud service. I'll talk more about this in a future video, but the goal is to put all the files that I use everywhere, that I synchronize everywhere inside Obsidian and be able to click on them and open the files on the apps. In other words, I have to see the files. For example, the thumbnails for the videos, I create them on Pixelmator. Pixelmator has its own extension that of course Obsidian done, doesn't understand, but I need to see that file to be able to click on that file and open that file on Pixelmator, okay? So that's that. Another thing I did was I moved the neural network and HOM files from the action containers to the static containers. The best place to have this, in my opinion, would be here, uh, but I'll soon show you why it, they are not here anymore. But they are definitely not action uh, containers because these are things that I need, that I eventually need. So when I was explaining the, the static container concept, I realized, okay, that's not in the right place. <laughs> so I moved it to the static container. Visually, and it would be better to have them here. But if we go to Obsidian Publish, what I did here to avoid uh, uploading files, wrong files by accident, if you go to filter, again, there will be a specific video about Obsidian Publish in the future, but you can manage what folders you don't want to see as options to select files and upload those files. So I have here action containers, static containers, and timeline. In other words, all my files that are not uh, website files will not be options. If we go back, oops, if we go back to publish here, the only folder I have here is the website folder. So if I, let's go to the filter. If I remove, let's say, the timeline from here. Why can't I go back? Okay, done. So it's now here. I could accidentally select a file from inside this folder, and that's why I created a filter uh, adding timeline here as a, uh, a folder to be hidden from the options to upload files. And that's why I don't keep these files here because if I move them to this space here and go back to Obsidian, here it is. So I could accidentally click here and upload this file. Let's go put this back here. And unfortunately, there is no way to filter files. The only options is you can exclude uh, existing folders. There's no way to exclude files. I would love to, to do that so I would be able to keep those files here. And finally, there's some mental confusion I created for myself here. <laughs> if we go to the timeline, remember that I told you I created these groups to make it easier to find the files. If we click here to create a new file, I have this property here, type, and here is where I choose what this note is all about. So it can be a blog post, it can be a client collaboration and a journal. Everything that happens in my life, things that I'm taking notes about here on Obsidian is considered, it's kind of a journal entry, 
However, it it's not a traditional journal. It's it, it's more like a timeline because there are many topics like like I just showed you. And that was okay when I was using the timeline folder to put everything inside that folder and create the types, uh, the different types to filter that information. Then when I created this, this groups, I didn't want to create a lot of groups. And when I was kind of happy with what I created, I needed a space to put the rest of the timeline, which I end up calling journal because I didn't, I, I couldn't figure out a, a different name. It's, it's because the word works, it's journal. In the end, it's a journal, but I prefer the concept of a timeline, everything in that timeline. So the moment I separated this, I created these groups, I had to create a specific group for everything that is not all these other topics here. So what's happening now is every time I'm creating a new timeline entry, which can be a journal entry or something else, I tend to create it uh, in using in, in the in the main timeline folder instead of creating it inside the journal, which is now the new <laughs> timeline. This is so confusing. So I may have to rethink this name here or train my brain to remember that now journal is the old timeline. And I kind of like this separation here because I can open uh, the timeline and show you things uh, the way it was before. I could never open the timeline because there, there is too much personal information there. So I also have to find ways to, uh, to keep the system useful and also uh, make it possible to show things to use. In, in my case, there is also this balance. I have to figure out ways to make the system work for me, but not only for me, it has to work for you guys too. I mean, I have to be able to show it because I don't like the idea of having this second account where uh, it's everything fake. Anyway, <laughs> that's it for this one. Just an update, a quick update. I'll try to keep updating you guys on this because I, I think it's interesting to show you the progress of how I think and how things change. If you haven't, please go watch the other video so you will understand a little bit better what I'm talking about today. If this was helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna help even more, please consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube. Thanks for watching. See you soon.